Welcome to View from the Top, where our guest this week was Sir George Buckley, Chief Executive of 3M, the US diversified manufacturer that makes everything from scotch tape and post-it notes to dental equipment. Now, Sir George is hardly the typical US corporate titan, hailing from Yorkshire in Northern England and a pathetically poor background, he's rather forthright in his opinions and that sometimes leads him into trouble such as last year when he told the FT that President Obama was anti-business. So I started by asking him whether anything had changed since then to alter his opinion. Well, uh, I think that uh, the President has probably softened his stance on some of these things and maybe is. Uh, uh, realized that maybe uh, some of the positions he took uh, was, was not all that helpful. So I think probably things have improved a little bit since then. And the, the person he's most likely to face next year, uh, or sorry, the, the later this year is a former businessman, Mitt Romney. Um, are you more optimistic about the sort of policies that he might put forward? Well, I, I, I think yes is the answer to that question. I think, you know, he's, he's been in business, he's been very successful. Uh, I think that uh, in the end, ultimately, he'll probably do what's right for business. And uh, you know, some people might differ in opinions on this, but I think uh, what ultimately is right for business is generally right for job creation, and job creation is generally right for the country. So I'm hopeful that that will, uh, will get better if Mitt Romney gets elected. Mm. And both here in the UK and, and, and over in the US, there's, a, there's rather a renewed political focus on, on manufacturing. Um, uh, do you think that the political leaders, despite their focus, do they, do they really get it? Well, it's hard to know. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's like uh, uh, if you're a theoretical physicist talking to, to somebody who's not about theoretical physics. Uh, I mean, there's just some things that uh, it, it's not in their, uh, in their experience base. So I think they want to understand these things, and I think they're genuinely positive about them. They realize that... Uh, uh, Manufacturing is, is 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 good for job creation. It's good for wealth creation. I mean wealth creation in the Adam Smith sense of the word. I don't mean more money for me or for you. I mean money that will ultimately trickle down into society. So I think yes, they 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 um, intellectually understand that this is uh, this is good. Uh, I'd only insert here, if I can, that uh, there are a couple of other things that need to get focused on. And uh, the second is mining and minerals extraction and agriculture. They are the three great value creating enterprises that exist in the world and that's what a nation ought to do. I mean there are some other things they can do on some service businesses that, that, that help but they would be the three things I would do manufacturing being number one. But if you were, uh, I mean looking at manufacturing itself and to, to get this sort of magic rebalancing of the economy that mm -hmm. people talk about, I mean, what would your sort of key policies be? Well, uh, first of all, um, you should always start in the core. We should start, if, if we were talking about Britain, for example, we start in the, in the places that Britain is already very good. I mean, it's, it's, it's great at pharmaceuticals. It's got the second largest pharmaceutical company in the world. Uh, it's got two of the three largest uh, petrochemical companies in the world. So I'd start in the places where, where Britain is strong, uh, if we wanted some, some immediate, uh, immediate benefit. But uh, uh, my policies would be clearly if you want to be good at those three things that I talked about, you know, the three ways in the world in which to create new wealth, you need great science, native engineering, you need STEM education as we call it. So, so you, you can't be good at those things that are value creating unless you're good at these, these science and engineering related subjects. So there has to be a piece of the pu puzzle has to be on education. Um, you know, in, in terms of, of profitability, it's, it's not what you make that counts, it's what you keep that matters. Uh, so I think we need to, to incentivize uh, uh, companies to invest. It's not just in Britain, uh, but in, in manufacturing and technology. Uh, and we need great education for that. And uh, we need a, a, a real focus on, on competitiveness. Uh, you know, the, a lot of people talk in local terms about what's good for Britain, what's good for America, what's good for Germany. But the practical reality is, is the problem you face, any, any country faces, is its companies need to be competitive on a global basis. You need to learn how to compete with the Chinese in China, because that will better equip you to compete with the Chinese when they're in Britain, say, for example. Uh, and so I would go after tax policies. I would go after trying to find a, uh, a balanced approach to regulation. You know, some regulation is necessary to prevent excess. But uh, it would be as many as necessary, 
but as few as possible on regulation is what I would say. I don't want to contrast kind of good and bad, but if you, if you look at uh, Britain today, uh, in these areas, Britain has no heroes. You might say, well, do we really need heroes? But you know, people rally around these ideas of, um, if you want children to be interested in, in science and technology, they need people to look up to. And it's almost non-existent in Britain at the moment, sadly. Mm -hmm. And if we look at all this, it's taking place against a, a backdrop, I guess, of you could call it economic uncertainty mm -hmm. at, at best. Um, and we've spoken in the past, do you think there's a danger that we see maybe in the next year that, that we go back into a downturn or recession? Well, you know, uh, I'm not an economist, but Keynes had a wonderful principle that there's no sustainable recovery without uh, sustainable uh, uh, improvement in, in market demand. And while the economy is very complex and it's kind of a closed loop system, and I'll talk about it almost all, only open loop. If, if, you, if you look at the, uh, uh, you know, in this sort of circular argument, where do you cut the ring and, and begin to start? If you start with unemployment, uh, uh, you're not going to see improvements in, in the housing market, in America in particular, until unemployment uh, betters. Unemployed people generally begin to buy houses. You won't see improvements in, uh, in uh, consumer confidence uh, uh, until unemployment uh, improves and consumer confidence drives uh, uh, durable goods purchases, fridges, houses, boats, cars and things like that. You know, there are pockets here and there of, of betterment, but what companies want to do is they want to invest in value creation for their shareholders. So jobs are an output from that, not an input to that usually. It depends on the, on the industry. But uh, so, so it's when, when companies are not confident about the economic climate and they're not confident, perhaps, about taxation climate. They're not confident about a regulatory climate. That uh, you know, there tends to be a bit of a wait and see, and we'll do it when we have to kind of mentality. And if I move on to 3M itself, it's obviously a company known, perhaps above all, for for innovation in a sense. How do you, uh, you know, over the course of so many years, for what are often with Scotch tape or post-it notes, sure. fairly basic? products, how do you foster that culture of innovation? We actually give our employees a lot of freedom. Uh, for example, in our R&D and sort of uh, uh, product development areas, we give our people 15% of their time. This is, you know, Google has this 20%. People say, oh, it's, you remember the Google idea? We've been doing this for 30 or 35 years. Well, they copied so, you. So they copied us. It's the other <laughs> way around. But great company, though, they are. Uh, and, and, and so it's, uh, it's you know, people have a, a feeling that some how that their hand is on the steering wheel of the company. We're fortunate in 3M in that we participate in so many different end markets that rarely is, is uh, innovation, does it ever really fail fully? Because we may sort of push the ball down the field from here to here, and it may not turn out to be quite what we thought it was going to be. And we'll park that ball, and because of the wonderful networking and collaboration that exists in 3M, these things get picked up again and, and retread maybe down another pathway into a different end market. So it's a mental thing. Uh, uh, it's a freedom thing. It's a, it's a belief system that we have in the company. That's a, and we've done it for 60 or 70 years, and, and, and we're very good at it. Now on to a game of a different sort. So George Buckley, are you ready to play uh, Long Short? OK, yes. George Osborne. Long. Chinese growth. Long. Nicolas Sarkozy. Long. Sony. Ah, short. Oil at $150 a barrel. Short. Ben Bernanke. Long. Facebook. Long. Angela Merkel. Short. The London Olympics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mm. Long. Thank you very much.